Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome at Salem United Methodist Church. It's good to see you all together. I was just telling to my daughter that I walk up to the altar trying to enter into a spirit of prayer to start worship, but this music, I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't do it. It's a different kind of worship. Anyway, welcome to everybody. A special welcome to those who are here for the first time. It's wonderful to have you here in worship. Uh, today we're missing a few friends here who are gone. I hope uh, and pray that they're all uh, safe in their travel and in their uh, vacationing. Uh Watching God, we come to worship you and give thanks that you are our God and we delight in our commitments to and for you. With joy, we gather together before our God, trusting that God will nurture and nourish us in ways of godly loving and living. Creating God, you are the breath of life, and you breathe into us new life and a deep awareness of God's constant presence. Guiding God, we come to praise and worship you for the way you lead us into paths where we learn of you and your mercy. We gather this day to affirm our beliefs in the God who guides and blesses us, all who seek to worship and serve our God. Amen. Scripture reading is from Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 and 14 and 26 through, I'm sorry, 16 through 23. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. 
The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, self-ambition, dissension, faction, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. May God bless the reading and the receiving of his words this morning. So every Sunday throughout uh, the rest of the month of July, we will be uh, studying uh, and understanding this uh, spiritual uh, fruits. And uh, every Sunday we'll do three. There are nine of them. So today we're going to focus on uh, the first three, love and peace and joy. Uh, to uh, make this uh, experience a little bit more alive, I travel, not really big travel, I went to uh, visit some of our families in their garden. Families who grow vegetables or flowers or fruits. And I uh, did a little interview to each of them. And we're going to start today by uh, taking a look to uh, my visit to the pages to Ed and Betty's house. Take a look. This land had practically no trees on it when we bought it. Hello, Padgett. Thanks so much for letting me come to your garden. Well, you're very welcome. So let me ask you a question. Why do you grow these beautiful flowers and these vegetables? Vegetables because Fresh vegetables are so much better tasting and so much better for you than store-bought vegetables. And we just like seeing things grow. Yes. Flowers, because I'm just in love with flowers. <laughs> sure. Did you see any connection between uh, uh, growing uh, vegetables and fruits from the land and uh, growing closer to God? Why would we have all this without God? I mean, it's impossible to think of this without thinking about God. I mean, he provides us with beautiful flowers. He provides us with great tomatoes, peppers, squash. Um, it's just what he does. Yes, thank you. We like to see things grow. Betty said, and uh, in, she said, impossible to be in the garden without thinking about God. Yes, indeed. I think it's in, impossible to really enjoy fruit, to see vegetable growing, to see flowers growing without feeling a deep connection with God. Sense of wonder and awe, at least thinking about a minute, how can all this beauty can actually be here? And that happens when we go in any possible outdoor, especially in the summer, but in any season in many different ways. Now, of course, they put a lot of work. We all put a lot of work in growing and taking care of plants. But we also witness this uh, transformation from the seed to the plant that flower and the fruit that are coming out. Uh, and really, uh, you wonder how can all this be possible? And you truly 
through faith, see the hand of God through all of this. Now we uh, learn about the biological uh, process of uh, plants to grow. Uh, you know, we know that it goes from germination to sprouting the seed and then the light and the nutrients uh, uh, of the land that really help the process to happen. We know because they're studying that or we're studying about how the all stages of life, uh, stages of the seed happen. But what we don't know, what science cannot really explain, how come that this process of life start? Why life start, where that come from, and how all these elements from the light and the sun and the warmth and the soil, how all these elements come together to create something so wonderful and so incredible. This is what I would call the mystery of growth, the mystery of life of God, a mystery that he holds for us. And any farmer, no matter how big or small is uh, uh, your garden, they all are able to witness this miracle unfolding in front of their own eyes. I, uh, I'm not a, a great farmer. I was never a great farmer. But I, I uh, grow flowers on my patio. And uh, I tell you that for me to learn how to take care of those flowers and see them changing and growing, uh, that change the way that I, I see myself and my life. I start talking. I don't. Hopefully, nobody see them when I when I see me when I'm doing that. I don't think so. But I think I, I'm, I develop a relationship because when I see these flowers coming out like that, it just really opened my heart and filled me with the sense of wonder. Now. That is the reason why there is such a deep and a great connection between uh, the spiritual experience, the spiritual growth, and uh, uh, the actual biological growth. That's the reason why the scripture has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of passages that are actually referring to uh, the nature and the growth uh, to, as an illustration of what it means to grow closer to God. It's just filled with that image. Of course, the uh, culture in Israel, Old Testament as well, New Testament, was uh, uh, deeply connected to, to the farm. I mean, they were settled into the land. So that was their point of reference. So that's what they were understanding. And so Jesus himself used images of growth as great parable to help us to catch a glimpse of what even the kingdom of God is. Do you want to know how it is the kingdom? Then you can just sort of understand it by looking at a seed growing into beautiful flowers. So we have now this list of nine fruits of the spirit. And uh, uh, they are on the screen. So they are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Should we read it that together again? Do you mind? That helps uh, to remember. Let's go together. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Don't you love to have some of this gift in your life? And I bet the people that live with you, in your family, your friends, they will love to have you filled with these fruits in your life. So you can see the connection, right, between spiritual growth and the fruit of the spirit. Now, when we hear the words, the two words spiritual growth, I think we all think about different things. And I like to sort of sort this out and understand what spiritual growth really means. Uh, many people, when they think about spiritual growth, they think, OK, I'm going to go to church. I'm going to read the Bible. I'm going to go and pray. And that, that will grow my spirituality. Well, it's not really actually that. Spiritual growth doesn't. It's not equal going to church. 
I should not say that because I, that's my job. But it's good to come to church. I'll get to it. But it's not the coming to church per se that actually create that spiritual growth. Some other people uh, feel that they grow spiritually by serving others. That then uh, they uh, love others. They maybe clean up their language. They clean up their acts. They change things around, and that really is spiritual growth. Well, I think that it may be the result of spiritual growth, but it does not cause us to grow spiritually. Also, I know lots of people that uh, they think that spiritual growth means to figure out, to, to have a sort of a, a, a list, a religious list of things to do to get to heaven. I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, and I'm going to open the door, and God is there waiting for me. No, that's not what spiritual growth is. In fact, Jesus rarely did anything like that. He definitely never gave us a list of things to do and not to do to go to heaven. It just doesn't work that way. I think the best way for us to understand how important is spiritual growth and what really means is to actually go back to the scripture that Doug read for us today and uh, to those uh, uh, spiritual fruits. And today we're especially concentrating on the first three, love, joy, and peace. So let me ask you a question. Out of that list of nine spiritual fruits that you read with me together a few minutes ago, do you feel like uh, uh, you are lacking some of them? Do you feel that maybe you have a little too little of some of them? Maybe you feel that you're pretty good in some and not really that great in others. That is the perfect way to begin a spiritual growth with a sense of awareness of lack of spiritual fruits. So it is love, maybe, that is missing in your life. Have you maybe growing quite irritable and less acceptable and maybe more judgmental toward other people around you lately? Those are maybe signs that the level of love in your life is quite low. Is there maybe joy that is missing or really low? Have you been overwhelmed like I am sometime, overwhelmed by the sense of doom and sadness and negativity that is pervading our time and our society? Is there maybe peace that is missing or very low? Do you deal with a lot of anxiety, worry, and constantly thinking about what could happen in your life? You see, spiritual growth is truly about all this. It is not about abstract spiritual process, but it is uh, about taking care of the most important part of ourself, which is our soul. When our soul is low in joy, peace, and love, all the rest of our life falls apart. And you start to have physical problems, health issue, mental issues. You might start to have problems with your relationship. You might start to have problems with your work and with everything that you do. This is how crucial it is to care for our spiritual growth in our lives. Because when our spiritual gifts are going down, everything else is starting to fall apart. Maybe not right away, but soon those things start to happen. So where is your level of joy, peace, and love right now? You may be stuck, and you don't know how to get out. And uh, you start to feel the consequences on all the part of yourself. When we grow spiritually instead, the opposites start to happen. And we go closer, closer to God and we sort of become the best version of ourselves. And when you do, you know it. 
you know it. And the people around you will let you know that you are joyful, that there is a sense of peace that you pass on, transmit to the people close to you. They know they feel loved and cared for. This is what happened when we let the spirit grow into our soul. Now, the big question is, though, how we're going to do that? How we can start the process of growing spiritually? The first thing that usually we all do is to uh, go on Amazon, if you have an account or a, or a book store, and uh, look for self-help uh, spiritual books. I check just for fun. Amazon has over 100,000. Yes, you heard well. Over 100,000 books on spiritual help. Clearly, lots of people go there looking for figuring out a way how to put their life together and become more joyful and peaceful and uh, uh, be able to grow spiritually. Now, there are a lot of great books. Don't get me wrong. But I'm afraid that a book alone, a self-help book, is not going to help us to go there, to go closer to God, and to have our best version of ourselves. The best way from the scripture, we learn from the scripture, how to grow spiritually, and how we can enjoy this fruits of joy and peace and love in our lives, uh, actually comes, uh, I, again, from the nature. I wanted to show you a small little uh, video uh, from nature that illustrate well how the spiritual growth actually works. Let's take a look. what happened in a little bit more than five months, months time. From the little seed inside the apple, you actually have a tree. This is clearly the result of uh, the work of this person who took care of the seeds and put it in the soil and probably fertilized and make sure that there was enough light. But all the rest was really done by the creator who, uh, really holds the mystery of life in ways that we don't know. This is a great illustration about how our own spiritual growth actually happened. First of all, it's not my complete job to grow spiritually. It's not even only God's job to help me to grow spiritually. Spiritual growth is a joint project between God and I. 
just like in the growth of a little plant that you saw it. It's exactly like that. We cannot control and manufacture what really happened into the process. We cannot have a, a sure outcome of the results of uh, what this process is going to be. We cannot control it. On the other end, we are not passive in the process. Our job here is very important and is to discern where and which way the spirit is working with us, which is, means open your ear, open your heart, pay attention to God's way to talk to you, because sometimes he does in ways that you don't expect to happen. Pay attention to the areas in your life that might need a transformation, because right there is where he can grow the seeds of spiritual growth for you. Pay attention to the nudges of God in your life. And we can put the first and the second on the screen, if you don't mind. So that was the first. The spiritual growth is a joint project between you and God. Second, the spiritual growth is a process, not an event. Now, I'm not very patient. Patient is the fruit of the spirit for next week. It's not going to be pretty for me, if I have to be honest. But I would like everything here and now. That's sort of our society. You know, I want to get what I want right away. Well, spiritual growth is not going to go that way. Now, it's true that I can just go to God, and God, by miracle, can fill me with joy. And uh, he can do that. But mostly likely is a process, and God's time is not my time. And usually it doesn't happen when and how I want to, which is, means that my part of the job is uh, to be able to uh, feed those, uh, this growth step by step by uh, doing what is needed to it. Fertilize my soul. Make sure there is light. Make sure that it's clean by the weeds that may be suffocating my soul. And that is the time when going to worship and prayer and reading the scripture, but also spiritual friendship and Bible study, have all this have a fundamental role in caring for your soul. I believe also that figuring out where are the weeds that are suffocating our soul, it's a tough job to do because it means that we might need to be aware of the things that we need to get out. And sometimes our negative relationship Sometimes our bad habit, sometimes our addictions, sometimes our uh, elements in our life that are truly suffocating our soul. That is my job. That is your job so that Jesus, through his spirit, can let the fruit come through and come to me. Lastly, spiritual growth is not just for your own fulfillment but is also for the sake of others. This is crucial. A lot of people feel like, oh, if I feel well with myself, with my soul, I'm done. It's just not going to go that way. It's not by any chance that the first gift is love. It's the main gift. It's not by any chance that you heard the scripture is in the context of loving other people. You know, when we begin to think that spiritual growth is all about me, uh, we tend also to become quite individualistic and maybe even narcissistic. And that can happen really fast. And that is, you can imagine, destroy the spiritual gift instead of let them grow. We need to be able to understand that those gifts are given to us so that we can share it with others, spread it to others. And that is constantly challenging us to pay attention how we use that spiritual growth. So my prayer is that during this uh, three weeks through this process, uh, we all can find ways to open yourself to the work of your spirit, of the spirit of God, so that you can slowly start to taste and enjoy the fruit of the spirit, to receive love and joy and peace. There are so needed in this time more than ever. 
and you can enjoy it through your action in your relationship and just simply within yourself. I will be pray that you can indeed grow closer to God and in that process become the best version of yourself. Amen. At this time, uh, we have the opportunity to uh, give uh, uh, a gift out of the many gifts that we receive from our Creator, a portion of uh, what we can receive. So if you like to do that, you can use one of the envelopes that are in front of you, and uh, the plates will be coming through our chairs at this time. God and creator of all, we uh, dedicate these gifts to you. And in faith, uh, we put it in your hands so they can be multiplied and they can go and touch many lives and bring love, joy, and peace to many. Please bless them. In your name we pray. Amen. And as you go into in the world, back to your busy life, May the Spirit of God be with you and allow you to take time to grow those spiritual gifts. Be part of that job that the God is doing in your heart, in your life, and in your soul today. May the Spirit of God be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen.